Hello again, everybody. This is Dan Clouser, and welcome back to the Journey of My Mother's Son podcast. Still on location at the Ripken Experience in Aberdeen, Maryland, at the Baseball for All Girls National Tournament, and I'm joined by another former member of the All American Girls Professional Baseball League, Gloria Rogers. Gloria, thanks for joining me today. Hello. <laughs> What do you want me to say? Uh, <laughs> me say my whole name, Gloria McCloskey Rogers. It was McCloskey when you played. <laughs> That's right. right. So, um, so we met yesterday for the first time, and we're, we we uh, we've been talking here and and uh, you know learning a little bit about your story. So you didn't have a very long career in the league, but tell me a little bit about um, first of all what made you want to play in the league, and then you can go into the story as to why your career was shortened. Okay. I always wanted to play, and I, and I played softball from the time I was a little tiny girl. And, well, I played all sports and things like that, but then when I was in high school, I was a softball pitcher, but I read the um, St. Louis paper, because my folks took the paper, and I, wrote, I saw where the Rockford Beaches were having tryouts, and you could... Um, I sent in a letter or something, and I wrote a guy by the name of Carl Gaines, and he wrote me back and told me when to come to Rockford, and that I could come and I could try out, and and I have that letter and everything, and he said to me, all you have to do, I don't even remember that he said to bring your glove, I remember he said, bring your slacks and bring your spikes. And so I went to Rockford, my mother and my sister drove me, and I don't know how far it was. over 200 miles and okay. in 1953 that's a long ways yeah. you know and so I you went probably didn't have an RV like we're like we're no, driving around no. in <laughs> and uh, my mother drove me and my sister went and we had the tryouts and I remember a lot of, about the tryouts where some of the ones uh, Sue Zappé made the team the same time that I did. Oh, and so you guys actually tried out together. Yes, we did. did we tried out together. That. That's very cool. And still friends today. Right. We are. And also, um, Salty was there too, but she, some scout had found her. And I just went for a tryout. And I don't know how many people were there. I said 40, and Sue said maybe 35 or so. And they had, but she, Sue doesn't remember anything about the tryouts or what we did. But I I remember um, how I made the team was I could throw the ball a long distance, and I don't know if they measured or what, but they said that I threw it 197 feet. That's a long way. You can throw it from center field to home. And the other thing that I that I remember that I did, I was the fastest one dropping the bat and getting to first base. And so they they let me stay and everything, and I got a uniform, and um, I got to ride on the bus and went to a ball game and got my name in the program and big deal, you know. And then the next thing I knew, my dad said that he was going to come and get me and that I couldn't stay. And that makes my dad sound like he was a bad person, but he really wasn't. Yeah. I mean, he's just... Uh, that was just in 1953. That was just a long ways for your daughter to be away from home. Right. Right. And so, how old were you at the time? Uh, I was 17, 18. My birthday is yeah. May 20th, and it was right in there. Okay. Uh, at that time, and I bawled and squalled and threw a fifth all the way home. Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. And then I, uh, I, I wish that I could have played at least that summer right. you know but i didn't get to and i was already enrolled in girls school in columbia missouri and where my great great grandmother had gone and uh, anyway i went on to st joe missouri and i played for gets country club beer <laughs> i doubt if anybody's ever heard of that beer and uh, you know you think you're pretty good. You're not. I'm not being cocky or anything. But in high school, you know, I pitched for four years and only lost two ball games in four years. That's right. kind of a record, you know. And then you get with all these other people, and you find out there's a lot of people a lot better than yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. The uh, the big fish in the small right, pond right. theory but for sure. I played for that team in 
stayed there in St. Joe, Missouri the whole summer. And we did go to Nationals. The Nationals were in uh, Omaha. And it wasn't like the Nationals are now. I don't know how. You got qualified to go. Right. But we did that. And one interesting thing was the uniforms were satin. Wow. So you had, a, and I do have some pictures of that. Yeah. So. Yeah. But That's cool. I, this is just wonderful what I'm doing now. I'm so glad that I got to come this weekend, and I just thought it was awesome, the opening ceremonies and everything, and I'm just yeah. happy to meet all the girls. And yeah, it, It's great. I mean, so we're sitting here watching a game. Right. Um, from a, you know, teams just all over the country. I mean, did you ever think, you know, after the league ended, and there's such a long period without any type of women's baseball. Did you think that you would ever show see up this, at a place no. and see, you know, 500 girls playing baseball this weekend, 50 no. plus teams? I didn't think that I would ever see anything like this. And in, uh, and I said the other night, like, and I'm not putting down Texas and Missouri particularly, but they don't have anything like this going on in that area. And now Texas does have. Uh, some and I know some of the girls, but they all have to try out for the boys team and they are good right. and uh, There's something coming up in November and I'm not sure what it is, but it's at the Rangers Stadium Have you heard about anything about that? Right. that that's another grit series through MLB, right? Is it? Yeah, I don't know, yeah. but they are really yeah. Awesome. And how, how important do you think that is that Major League Baseball is finally getting behind? I think it's wonderful. Girls baseball. I think it's wonderful. Yeah, and they have enough money and everything that they do is first class. Yeah, so you, can, you were at the event two years ago yes. when one of my players was down there and you, you talked about how it was red carpet first class. I mean, how important do you think that is for those girls coming into that event that they are literally being treated as royalty? I think they all just loved it and thought it was absolutely wonderful yeah. and, and everybody was nice. There wasn't anybody complaining about things. It's extremely well organized, and and we had security like you can't believe. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. I That's mean, cool. I not that Dallas or Fort Worth or all those places. Not that they're you don't have protection. Right. But when you wear the baseball shirt around, sometimes you need right. protection, right. or when you fly, you need the security. You, yeah. you need help, yeah. especially the age that we all are. Right. Yeah. I just think this is, I think this is wonderful. I just love it. Yeah. And so I'm, I've been been witnessing you guys, you know, just observing <laughs> and the way you interact with these young kids. I mean, it, you really enjoy talking to these right. young girls. I mean, why, why is that so important to you? To, I mean, you, you are, when they come up and approach you and are talking to you, they've got your 100% undivided attention. You, you've gotten some of their phone numbers put in your phone. You're texting them. Why is that important to you? It's just important to me. I'm just really interested in them, and I just like the girls, and I want them to play. I, I want to try to tell them to be dedicated. Yeah. That's what I'm finding in the younger generation. I don't want them. Uh, I want you to have a choice. If you want to play softball, play softball. But if you want to play baseball, I don't want you to have to play on a boys team. That, right. That's just my feeling yeah and that, so that's always it. why i've been a supporter of women's baseball right. again i mean I, i'm a big supporter of softball as well but i do believe it should be about a choice if girls play so baseball too. she can play baseball if she wants to play softball she can play right. softball whatever yeah. they ultimately want to do is mm -hmm. what it should be all about so what about this facility that these guys are i think this in here? is i think this is just wonderful it's unbelievable and if you haven't been here you don't know what you've missed yeah you know, and I can har I can hardly wait to get home so I can talk some more and, and do some more things for kids. And I have done uh, quite a few things. I, I helped a little 6U team uh, in softball, and yeah. that was fun. Cool. And uh, I mean, and I, I just like kids. Yeah, and all these fields are are you know replicas of Major League Parks. Where we're sitting at now, it's called Cal Seniors Yard. It's a replica of Camden Yards. They got the hotel back there to replicate the warehouse in right field. Um, so it truly gives these kids a, a big league experience as well, which I think is is really cool. But I mean, 
is there a little party that's that's kind of jealous that you didn't play in this this type of right when you right were growing up there is i mean I, I would love to have played i i wish i could have just stayed longer and i i was a lost player there were 665 is that right players and they 650 or something like that but they hadn't found me yet. Right. Did I right. tell you that story about no, Paul? No, you didn't. Someone from the state of Washington called my mother, found the McCloskey name in Edina, Missouri, and asked them if they knew Gloria. And she was really hesitant. She didn't know whether to give them my phone number. Yeah, it might have been those guys who are calling you for your car warranty nowadays, right? Right, right, <laughs> right or about my student loan, something like that. Anyway, it just happened that we were home that that weekend and because yeah. my husband was a superintendent of schools and we were in a different area at that time, but we still had our house. So they yeah. said, could you come to Cooperstown? 2003, we flew on September 11th, and then I, it was really a thrill to see my husband called me and he said, Gloria, come here, the hair's standing up on my chest, your name is on the wall at the baseball hall thing. Wow. What, what was that like to, to see that and to be around a lot of your former players and friends? I mean, just how moving was that for you? Well, it was just really exciting. There isn't any way you can explain yeah. how it was. And, and my husband was my best friend, and he just loved all about it. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> and he, I won't ever remember him calling me to come around the corner that he found my name. Wow. On that, right. <laughs> that's pretty neat. Uh-huh. I, I, my hair is standing up just what? by you. My hair is standing up on my arms just by hearing <laughs> you tell the story. Okay. That's awesome. Uh, so um, we're just about out of time, but anything else you want to add? Um, yeah, I, my I just out there? really do like kids, and I want to help them all that I can. And awesome. Everything. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So I do have the one final question I always like to ask you, because um, the subtitle of my podcast is called "Many Little People in Many Little Places," which is from a lyrics of a song that go, "When many little people in many little places do many little things, and the whole world changes." So. You've kind of already answered the question, but what's one of the little things that Gloria does on a daily basis to make the world a better place? I don't know I, I, what I do to, <laughs> to make the world a better place, I, but I just like kids and, and try to be friendly and try to have a positive attitude and go on the next day. Yeah. I mean, I was really, I said this today, but <clears throat> you're really sad when you lose your husband or something like that and I have a friend that is having a terrible time right now but I, I just have to go on to tomorrow right and everybody hands handles it a different way yeah. and I look forward to every day yeah that's awesome you well, know I appreciate you taking the time I okay. love hearing your story I'm glad we got to meet this week okay and uh, you know hopefully we bump into each other maybe when we're coming through Plano Texas you'll uh, yeah, come you'll and get a text come and see from it. us and hope uh, you got some room in the driveway for a 33 foot well, RV I do <laughs> uh, I do go. I really do all right okay thank you no problem thank you. thanks a lot Gloria. Mm -hmm. for everybody else out there listening check out my other blogs and podcasts at danclauser.com thanks again Gloria okay thank you